Welcome back to Five in the Archives, where you get five minutes of facts and artifacts from the Southwestern Archives. Um, today we are here in our reading room, and we're standing in front of the desk and chair that belonged to Dr. Lee Scarborough. And I'm with, here with Dr. Queen, who is going to um, talk to us a little bit about Dr. Scarborough and his significance. So. Yeah, Dr. Scarborough was actually the second president of Southwestern Seminary, and uh, he was actually the hand-picked professor and successor to our founder, uh, Dr. B.H. Carroll. And um, uh, Scarborough was a man who uh, actually was from Colfax, Louisiana. His own father was a pastor. And uh, there's a number of good stories of, about uh, Scarborough, but one of, the, one of the ones that really means a lot to me is in a, uh, biography, a biography piece at the, at the end of his book, uh, World, uh, Recruits for World Conquest, that is called The Home or the House That Was Never Built. And what we find in there is that uh, from, from the very beginnings, Scarborough's mother would sing to him, would uh, pray for over him, even as a baby, that uh, he would become a Christian and be mightily used of God. However, uh, throughout uh, his growing up period, he wanted to become a lawyer. And so his family actually had set aside money to build a house that really was never built. They used that money to send Scarborough up to Yale University, Scarborough was in his dorm room in Farnham Hall there at Yale University and was reading the scriptures and one day the Holy Spirit convicted him, I believe that in many ways it was the answer to his mother's prayers, that he needed to be in the ministry. And so he left um, from Yale University and he came down and uh, of course was associated under the preaching of B.H. Carroll. Carroll saw a lot in this young man and uh, 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 he went into the ministry, he ended up being the pastor of uh, the First Baptist Church in Abilene, Texas. And that's when Carol sent him a letter and said, I want you to come and I want you to occupy the very first teaching post in evangelism in the world. And Scarborough was very flattered. Uh, in many ways, Carol was a mentor to him. But he was, he was very comfortable in his work at the First Baptist Church in Abilene. However, uh, Carol was not a man who would take no for an answer, and so he sent another letter. And Scarborough actually writes, he says, you know, I, I begin to think I could have influence here in Abilene, Texas that God would bless. But if I went to Southwestern Seminary, I could have influence that would endure for the ages. And so he left his church uh, there in Abilene to come here and uh, in many ways was running the day-to-day -day operations because Dr. Carroll was failing in some of his health. Uh, Carroll was the president. Uh, he was kind of a special assistant to the, prof uh, to the president taught evangelism here, and uh, whenever B.H. Carroll was on his deathbed, he called for Scarborough. Scarborough, he took Scarborough by the hand, and he said, Scarborough, I want you to make sure that the vision of the seminary continues. And he said those very famous words, Lee, keep the seminary lashed to the cross. And that's exactly what L.R. Scarborough did. He, uh, he assumed the presidency, became the second president of the institution, and it was under his leadership that Southwestern Seminary was able to see a number of endowments that came to the seminary. So the seminary was able to grow. It went from the Fort Worth Hall and the Barnard Hall to the Memorial Building and some of the other buildings on campus. And so Scarborough was very significant uh, to Southwestern Seminary and not only his evangelistic fervor, which continues to this day, but also in some of the, um, uh, the help that he gave for fin financing the buildings that we uh, learn in here at Southwestern Seminary. Great. Um, Robert Burgess, our digital resources librarian, is here with us today as well, and he's going to tell us a little bit about our digital resources that we have available in the digital archives. So here is a letter that uh, is from George Scarborough, Eller's uh, dad, and he is writing to him about how uh, moved he is that uh, Lee Scarborough has decided to uh, uh, become a pastor. And so here you have it in his own writing, uh, talking about the everything Matt was talking about with him and his wife praying for mm -hmm. uh, Lee throughout his entire life. And this is uh, the culmination of, yes, you, you have made it, you've done what we hoped and prayed that you would do. We have uh, different uh, programs uh, here. We have several ads and programs for different evangelical uh, meetings. Uh, that he uh, attended. 
We have several different uh, articles, uh, news clippings that are from our uh, various uh, newspapers. And then uh, we have uh, several photographs of uh, L.R. Scarborough and uh, Dr. Green, you want to talk about a couple people in this picture? Yes, this is actually uh, in Atlanta, and this is uh, a meeting of the group of the 75 Million Campaign. Uh, now, many of you may have never heard of the 75 Million Campaign, but if you're a Southern Baptist, you've heard of the cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention. And really, in many ways, the $75 million campaign was the precursor to what we now have as the cooperative program. You see, before the cooperative program and before the $75 million campaign, uh, all the different agencies, all the different colleges, all the different schools would try to get time in a church to try to ask for support. And finally, there was enough leadership and enough vision to say, you know what, we can do a lot more together than we can do on our own. And so the Southern Baptist Convention elected a committee uh, for the $75 million campaign, and it was actually chaired by L.R. Scarborough. And although you probably cannot see him, he's actually right here. To his left is J.M. Gambrell, J.B. Gamble, who was a trustee here and helped a lot with uh, what we did. And as, uh, just to the left of him is George W. Truett, the great longtime pastor of First Baptist Dallas, who was a great friend to uh, the seminary. And so this is, uh, this is really, uh, in many ways, those people who put feet to what we now know as the cooperative program of the Southern Baptist Convention. We have other pictures of uh, Scarborough and Carol, and this one also has uh, J. Howard Williams as well, another president. And then we have several... Uh, a lot of publicity from the $75 million campaign in our archives as well. So, we're wondering, well, how can I access this material? Well, we're actually in the process of scanning this material and putting it online our, on our digital archives, so you have to go check that out. Now, Matt, would you like to try out the, the chair here? Sure, sure, sure. All right. I feel like I'm up to some evangelistic mischief here. 